Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I am back with another energetically channeled musician video. Now this one is an extremely requested video and it's like time travel every time you mention this singer songwriter's name and you mention the band he's in you immediately go back to the 80s early 90s and a series of hits the glam rock the hair bands you just go right back to that time and you're there you're transported there and people love this young man he was born on february 1st of 1964 tragically passed away at the age of 47 on August 11th of 2011. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about the singer songwriter from the band Warrant, Jamie Lane, and he is so requested. All right, so here we go. This morning, I was working on two other people. We had an earthquake in Los Angeles, that's where I am. And so I shut my camera off. I went back to the drawing board because my mind was kind of distracted and he wandered in. I say that because his energy is strong, intelligent, and articulate. Although I'm hearing to tell you that people didn't always see him that way. He kind of makes me feel the way that women describe feeling when they are seen for their physicalities and not their brain or what they do or what they contribute. He's kind of making me feel like that with him. Now, of course, I had to look up his chart because that's what I gotta do. We do not have a time of birth. I do not have a time of birth that I can collaborate with anybody. So I ran it a noon chart for him. I just split the difference. I usually run 6 a.m., 6 p.m. I split it for noon and just to see what we could pull up. Have no idea what his rising sign is. But what I can tell you is he is a Virgo moon. Virgo moon, what do I tell you about Virgo moons? incredibly psychic, incredibly intuitive, one of the most intuitive, psychic, logically, matter of fact, God gifted ability at being able to read energy, read people and understand the lineage of the thought. Okay, so the Virgo moon is incredibly, incredibly psychic. One of the most psychic signs. I know people are gonna tell me, no, it's Pisces. I'm gonna say to you, no, it's not. It's always Virgo sun, moon, or rising. And Virgo moon in particular speaks it. And a lot of them work as professional psychics and mediums because of, and astrologers, because of their ability to really understand the metaphysical. So Janie was a person who basically had that ability from birth. It's inherent in him. It comes from the mother's lineage, the moon. So he's an Aquarius sun with a Virgo moon. We have, and this is what I think was his Achilles heel, if I could venture to say. We have Saturn in Aquarius. We have Mars conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. The, I'm just gonna word it like this, the sins of the father carry on down. Not necessarily saying anything about his father, but what I'm saying is generational ancestral trauma carried from the father's side of the family. And with the person who's born with the Saturn conjunct Mars, it puts a damper on their self-expression and brings about, it's one of the things I look for, for depression in somebody's natal chart. That is one of the things. But it also brings about the karma of the generations seven, sevenfold before the person born with it. And that person carries that karma on or they break it, one or the other. They transcend it or they carry it. And it's such hit and miss in this planet because we never know what we're doing. We just are born and we want to enjoy ourselves. And then there's things like karma that ruin it for us. But he also had Mars conjunct his son. Now that part I like, because that gave him the energy, the ambition and the expression to step outside of his comfort zone and be who he wanted to be. So I could see that from it. No matter what time of day he was born, that exists in his chart. What I also noticed with his Virgo moon is that he has that mid 60s, conjunction of Uranus and Pluto. Both his are retrograde and they're in Virgo. Now, although the moon isn't conjuncted, thank God, or he'd have been really off the rails, but they are traveling in tandem together. So his psychic expression was off the hook. And with Uranus and Pluto and the moon, this would give the ability to write music, okay? So it would give the understanding of different languages and it would kind of come through him. So this is a good thing. So he has that. 
uh, Neptune is in Scorpio and Mercury is in Capricorn. Now that is also a little bit depressive. It can be. If you have this vibrant personality and then you have this like logical kind of squashy father time thing going on in your chart, it can, it can cause you a lot of problems. The thing that I noticed when I was looking at him, trying to figure out his rising sign, because that is something I will do. I will look at a person's face and try to determine their rising sign. Why do I do that? Because the rising sign is the way we appear, the way we look physically, regardless of our sun or moon sign, unless all three are in the same sign. But the rising sign is basically what you see in a physical level. So when I looked at images of him, I really felt that he could have been born a late degree Gemini rising, mid to late degree. And when I'm seeing the pictures of him at the time of his death, I can see cancer in the face. So cancer rising, I see that sensitivity. In his chart, he would have had a North Node in Cancer. That makes sense to me, trying to build a home, find a family that will be the way that he needs it to be. In other words, the family he came from, there was a lot of early, early, um, oh my God, early, probably the first eight years of his life, trauma built around his upbringing, okay, early in his life. I also noticed that he has Venus in Pisces. Now, that is a victim savior mentality when it comes to relationships. Now, when I look at his face, I can see the water in his eyes. I can see the sensitivity and the need to push away from everybody, like literally shut people down and back away. That is what comes out of his eyes, even when he was a young man. So I could see something like a Pisces, Pisces rising with Venus in the 12th house coming into the first house, something along those lines that gave him a super sensitivity. So when you understand that, you kind of are like, mm, I get it. Also, moon in opposition to Venus in Pisces. So for him, a lot of the way he portrayed himself in relationships was not what you got in a relationship. Some people are straight up whatever they are. You know, they're just straight up. Like if they're this way in school, they're this way in a relationship, they're this way at Christmas, whatever. His was different. Emotionally, he had to feel comfortable enough to express himself. That was another thing with him. And you're thinking, well, he's an entertainer, he's a musician. Could he express himself? No, because he judged himself. Problem with him is the words came out and the judgment hit. So that was also something in his chart that was very problematic. He wouldn't just create something and just let it go. He would critique the shit out of it and drive himself crazy. Overthinking, little bit OCD, little bit obsessive, well, obsessive compulsive. Um, very, very stubborn when it comes to his own health. I can fix it. I can do it. I'm not going to ask for help. I got that really strong. Now, I go all the way back to his young life and he really, really, really was pretty, pretty studious as a kid. Like whether he actually sat down and studied, he liked to intellectually learn things and he liked to do things, but he had this idea about who he was going to be. And I feel like that was passed on down to him. So he did his career beautifully, but was it really the ultimate thing that he wanted to do? I'm almost feeling like it wasn't. That's how I'm feeling. I'm literally feeling like it might not have been his like end all be all kind of thing. I get a really artistic creative side to him. Yes, we know he's a musician, a writer, singer. I get that, but that's not what I'm talking about. There was this other creative side to him, this really artistic, and he's kind of showing me painting. I don't know who paints in his life, but he has somebody in his life who is a painter or who is an artist, but it's a different kind of artist than him. And I almost feel like he's going to his middle child with that. I'm always trying to talk to her. The middle child out of his three children, whoever the middle one is, born smack dab in the middle, that one is the one that he communicates with all the time, as in she can easily pick his energy up. Obviously, he tries to communicate with them all. That child is a lot like him, and she can literally pick up what he's feeling, what he's hearing, what he's thinking, and she can translate it in her own head. So there's, and they're very similar in some way. So I don't know what that means, but that's the very first thing. The second thing I get is on, okay, so we're, yes, we have to talk about it. 
I'm laughing because he doesn't like to talk about it because he can't believe that that's what he thought. I was so um, unaware of what was going on around me. I was so naive. I was so not paying attention energetically. And when the shit goes on, then I blame myself over and over. So he really overthinks shit. But what I'm seeing, I'm going to go to the day that he passed. Then I'm going to go back to other things. But on the day that he passed, this is what I get. This is what I feel from the energy. On the day that he passed, there was a brunette female that took him to the hotel. He died in Woodland Hills at the Comfort Inn. I don't actually know that. That's what's reported. But whoever took him there, drove him there, gave him a couple of bucks there, picked him up some food there. When he died, took shit out of his pockets there. Had she called in when I died, had she reported it, I wouldn't have died. I choked. I choked. I don't know if that means he choked, literally, or he choked up on something. But I choked. That is how I died. I choked. Um, so I feel like that, I don't know if he aspirated something or like literally had asthma and started choking. But I choked. And had they called someone then, but they made sure that I wasn't breathing, left and then called is what I'm getting. Also took shit of mine. They took stuff of mine. It's a souvenir that they still have. I don't feel like this was a lover of his. I don't feel like this was a wife, an ex-girlfriend. I feel like this was more like a manager, assistant, person in his day-to-day -day life, but like not anybody romantically attached to him. And he was quite shocked when he died. I mean, you spend years trying to off yourself and then you're shocked when you die. This is like, this is how he describes it. Like I was actually kind of shocked. I stepped away and I stepped away. And so he's kind of saying when he saw himself dead, he literally was shocked. And it kind of shook him up to where... He didn't know what he was going to do. So there was a feeling immediately after he passed of being kind of confused and lost. So I don't think he was cognitive when he passed. So this tells me he may have been napping and choked on something because he wasn't consciously aware. And then there was a female that crossed him over. What I mean by that is obviously, okay, not obviously. A lot of people feel that you either are alive or you're in heaven. And that's not the way that I understand it to be. There are different levels and people go different places. And so I feel like when I say he was crossed over, crossed out of the physical energy sphere around this dimension and into the next, okay? Female came to get him and he was so happy. He was so happy that he forgot that he had passed away, okay? So immediately he was so happy to be free of the chains that bound him here is what I'm seeing. He's basically telling me he was a prisoner in his physical body, which makes me feel like he had some kind of underlying physical issue like diabetes or something else that was problematic with the kidney and liver. Obviously, if you're drinking, it's going to be liver, could be kidneys, but kidney and liver, and that to me is like diabetes, but so happy to be out of the physical constraints. Can't believe that that happened. He's very mercurial in his thinking. So he even analyzed that, but was so happy to step away. So happy to step away and really had no attachment once he stepped away. Heartbroken that he couldn't come back because of his kids. Heartbroken. I wanted to, there's somebody he wanted to call one of his ex-wives, I don't know which one, but one of them he wanted to call on that day or speak to just before he passed. Like she went through his thinking and he wanted to talk to her. Um, wasn't able to do it though. Wasn't able to do it. Couldn't get to the phone. Couldn't see the phone. Couldn't, this, this weird kind of sounds like alcohol poisoning actually. Couldn't see the phone. I mean, how hard is it to see the phone? Couldn't see the phone wanted to talk to her. I wanted to make it clear. I wanted to straighten things up. I wanted to tell her. I wanted to tell her. So I kind of feel like he's kind of showing me, it's not kind of, I'm seeing paperwork. I'm seeing things that he refused to sign, things he refused to do. I'm not going to pay attention to this. I'm just going to go to sleep. I'm not paying attention. To me, this is typical depression behavior, but I'm not going to deal with it. 
I'm not signing it. So I think he left one of the wives in some trouble because of paperwork unsigned or paperwork not signed. Not sure what that means. I don't know if that's a will. I don't know what that is. But I, the, the paperwork was an important thing. And I just kind of, I, I just kind of flaked on it. I avoided it. Okay. At first, he loved doing the music, by the way. At first, he loved it. Then he hated it. I love it. I hate it. I have two distinctly different personalities. This one loves it. This one fucking hates it. Um, I don't like it anymore. I don't like it. I don't want to do this. There was a lot of pressure on him to perform like he had performed and he didn't feel like he could do that. Like something in him was like, I just, I can't play at that level again. And that was extremely problematic for him. So there was a lot of things about him that he had a hard time dealing with himself and obligations. <laughs> He's telling me to hurry up. It's hilarious. Um, he's on a schedule, but yet he could never keep a schedule. Okay. So he's on a schedule, but I can't keep a schedule because they don't work like that. I work when I want to work at the way I want to work. So he has this funny sense of humor. He's like a bad child, like a really serious adult, like your grumpy grandfather, and then very quirky at the same time. Extremely intelligent, extremely intelligent. Oh my God. I have the biggest headache right here. Whatever happened, he closed his eyes because he had a massive headache right here. Massive, okay? This is the day he passed. Massive headache. I'm choking on something, but this is busting. So I feel like maybe he might have been taking some other things and alcohol or something else and alcohol. Um, I've just got a stabbing pain right here. So there was something with the head. There was something with his thinking. He didn't feel exactly right and no one paid attention. They just let me sit there. I feel like he died earlier or a, like the day before or hours before they came to get him. Like I, he, they just let me sit there. Like whoever it was that was in the hotel with him knew when he died but didn't phone it in for quite some time. It's not funny, but geez, he knows this, okay? He knows this. Um, I do feel like he had a delivery to the hotel, motel, I feel like a delivery came to me. This is like a drug dealer thing. Like, you know, do you have any drugs? Sure, yeah, I'll come to the hotel. That kind of thing. So he had that happen. There was a delivery. Um, there was the alcohol. There's also, weirdly, weirdly, they don't know me. They don't know me. They don't know me. So he was making friends with people who didn't really know him at the end of his life and kind of gathering a new group of people. And he's like, they wash their hands of me. So I think he's talking about like family members and people around him, but that's not true. He knows that now that that's not true. They expected more of him and he expected more of himself, but he gave up. I don't know what happened in 96 to him, but 1996, I'm marking that time frame as being a point where he kind of just stopped things in his life. And it was very much a struggle for him. So 96, and now we're going to talk about what happened. Now we're going to talk about it. I'm ready to talk about it. And I'm ready to talk about it because somebody is going to speak it out loud in public between now and next April. They're going to bring this person publicly forward to deal with what they did to me. Not because they did it to me, but because they did it to someone else. And they did it to several others. And it's going to become known. So the end of their life is going to suck royally because, and they do have royalties, Ooh, I wonder if it's somebody that, that worked on, on a record or label with him. Anyway, because I heard royal royalties, suck royalties. They try to get me to say things. Um, because somebody else had the same thing happen. A bunch of people had the same thing happen, okay? So it wasn't just him, but at the time he thought he was dumb and naive. And I think we're talking about the abuse and the violence that he suffered as a young musician. Now... Nowadays, knowing what we know, they do this to everybody. But what I'm getting with him, and I got, I'm asking who the musicians are that were the ones that violated him. And I heard really distinctly, and I don't even know how this is possible. Like, I, I don't know why I heard this, but I heard the Eagles. I don't know who, what, when, or why with that, but that came really loud, clear and through. And also um, Deep Purple. So those are the two bands I'm hearing, and I don't know who in those two bands is connected. 
And if they share like management teams, lawyer teams, makeup artists, whatever, I don't know, but those two bands. And I'm also getting that when this happened, the first time it happened, now keep in mind in his childhood, there were other incidents that went on and there were things that were, were violations to his physical body. And he carried a lot of illness around him, meaning his body kept score of what happened. So there were a lot of things in his physicality that were getting ready to kind of be off center a bit. Like he tried to keep himself healthy, but there were other certain things that were stored in his body. So I feel had he lived, there would have been some medical problems that probably would have carried on for a decade after that, okay? So what I'm seeing is had he lived past the age of 47, there would have been medical issues that he would have continually dealt with due to violations against the physical self with him. This is kind of what he's making me feel. I also get, I also get with him that this was something that happened that he was unaware of and this pissed him off. I didn't see it coming. I feel like he woke up in the middle of it. So I feel like there was some sort of drugs. Please be very careful if someone offers you something because even if they got a smile on their face, they might be passive aggressive evil and try to get at you. That's what he didn't see coming, okay? So he didn't see that behind the scenes. What he's showing me is there were three people involved, one woman, a camera, two men, three people. So four with him. This violation left him physically injured. Okay, it's not just a violation, not that that's a just, but there's violations in a sexual way that are like someone groping you, even somebody going farther than that. But this left him with physical injuries that were a constant reminder. The other thing is there was some sort of video taken at the time, old school, video, not cell phones, obviously, but old school video and evidence of what happened. And he was well aware of that. Somebody else is going to become well aware of it in the coming year because they're going to go after the person that filmed this. I think we're going to call this blackmail and they wanted to take him down. The reason he never spoke about it is because it, for obvious reasons, okay, he's a man, it's a violation. He didn't like the way it made him feel. He felt that people talked about it behind his back, even if he didn't let on. So this is a problem with him at the end of his life is he felt like everybody knew that, like there was a spotlight on him. And whoever this person is, and I'm going to say ugly bastard. The reason I'm saying that is I just heard to say that ugly okay ugly human being ugly person and i'm assuming we mean ugly looking too whoever's judging that but this person violated many and filmed many has a whole chest full of videotapes probably vhs and older whatever videotapes of the violence was into violence really violent and brutalizing and bullying and continuing to bully the people after and to pass his demons on physically this so this person may have been an alcoholic at the time that they did this if not a really bad drug abuser but pass their demons on so that there were okay what i okay what i take that to mean is the the violator the criminal had attachments on him that were passed into Janie at the time of the abuse. This is what I'm feeling. And it was extremely violent. And this person enjoyed, enjoyed that aspect of it. And that's what Janie couldn't quite shake in his life. And I don't blame him for that. That is horrific. And it will be dealt with. It will be dealt with swiftly and it will come up in the next year. There's no escaping it. You can't escape it. It's going to become public chatter chatter somebody's getting ready to say it and i feel like it's somebody on jamie's side so this is somebody who knows so this is somebody who either worked with him or was with him and actually knows and i don't know that it's a family member it's from outside of it kind of feels like there are family members who know but 
it feels like this person was not a family member and they know. So I feel that this will be dealt with. Now, what I'm seeing with his addictions and the way that he was, he's like, oh, I'm an overachiever. <laughs> I'm laughing at that because he overachieves at everything he does and he's really intellectual about it. So he's like, I'm looking into it. He's like, I'm, I'm looking into how to make, you know, um, how to make everything better when I do do drugs. He did do drugs and drink. It wasn't just drink, it was drugs as well. And I feel like, again, he had a handful of pills the day that he died, like a pocket full of pills. And I feel like he drank also. I do feel like he choked on it, vomit, something along those lines, aspirated. Um, when I look at the alcoholism, it got like steamrolled out of control, out of control, out of control. And I, I ask people, especially addicts of any kind, why they choose to do it. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Little bells on my phone ringing. So I ask them why they choose to do it. Like, what is the reason that you are choosing this type of behavior? Like why, what does it make you feel like? And I get many different descriptions. In his particular instance, what I'm being shown is that once he started drinking, immediately he stepped out of the physical pain of his body. So there was something going out, something else going on on a physical level with his body because he stepped outside of it. So he didn't feel physically in pain anymore when he drank but then he would have to come back into the physical body. He didn't like the physical. He would have to come back into the physical and it was painful for him. So he was escaping something on a physical level and I think the body was breaking down. And then of course, when that happens, you know, people don't know how to respond correctly because they're high or they're drunk at the time and they don't think clearly. So I get that with him, I get it. He's also kind of showing me he had a lot of fun trying to communicate with people after he passed because he was so psychic in life, he could hear things. And people mistakenly, he says, mistakenly called him paranoid, out of his mind, crazy, blah, 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 litany of things that you call people. But he's like, no, I could see them and I could hear them. So he'd broken down, like he was leaving. Okay, so what he's kind of making me feel, telling me, when I say that, it's like a telepathy, it's a feeling I get. But what he's saying to me is he was, crossing out of the physical boundaries of the body that the soul lives in and going into kind of the other dimensions and he was getting in trouble over there popping back here and popping out popping in popping so he got very good at leaving his physical body so astral traveling leaving the physical body and staying out that's what the the, the lure was for him i'm out of the physical like i'm able to be out here I don't have to be in the physical anymore. I don't have to deal with this. He felt very restricted, very um, put upon, very uh, bothered by it. I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to talk about it, okay? I don't want to do this anymore. And then he would feel bad out there and want to come back in and come back in and go, I don't like it here. So he was kind of on a seesaw, teeter-totter. I wish I hadn't have done that to myself. I just heard that. I wish I hadn't have done that. Misses his children terribly, but watches them all the time. There is a strong connection with the middle daughter. Very strong. I know she can hear me and she is like me. And again, I get the image of a painter. I am also seeing, now someone has to tell me who this is because I don't know, but this image keeps coming to me. I also see the image of a golfer. So dressed in like stripes and plaid and a weird hat with a ball on it and that kind of stuff. And he's referencing that. So I don't know if his dad played golf. He wanted to play golf. If he's Scottish, I have no idea. I'm going with all of those. <laughs> I just saw it, so I thought I'd say it. But there's all of this multitude of energy with him. He has a very sweet heart. I treated people terribly because I could not deal with the anger I felt, okay? So he threw his own anger off in like a compartment and he took it out on people around him. I made you show me that you cared. I forced you to show me that you cared. That's what he's saying. He was crossed out by a female and there was an aunt. There was a mother and an aunt on the other side 
and he was so happy to see everybody. Okay, this is, this is an even weirder thing to say, so here I go. We all know that when you die, you don't need to eat food, obviously. But he's telling me it was the best meal he had on the other side. It was the best meal I had. So I take that to mean that he was welcome to a family dinner. I know that sounds strange, but I really feel like that's what I'm seeing. I feel like when he crossed out, his family welcomed him back and they had a celebration. So it was a very hard life for him. It was super hard and it was something that he didn't really want to deal with. And but there was like an expression of joy when he crossed over. So he very quickly forgot about the physicality of himself. Now, I know people say there's like, there's life and then you go to heaven. That's a misnomer. When I say that he was crossed out, he was crossed out by somebody to another dimension and then he was kind of healed, but he felt like joyful. And then he came back here and he could feel the love from everybody. Every time you speak his name, he could feel it. He's talking about his family, friends, and fans. And he's so um, gracious, humbled by it, and so sad that he didn't see it while he was alive. He really didn't see it. I mean, obviously he saw people applauding and the fans and the people wanting interviews and all of that, but he didn't see it. Like I'm telling you, he's saying that, I didn't see it. He acknowledges it now and was so grateful for that. That's still a part of him. That's still a part of him. Um, I feel like he no longer carries that burden. So whatever karmically he was trying to separate from, it's gone. He no longer carries that burden. Yeah, he doesn't carry it anymore. There's something, somebody, okay, and I'm assuming this is some person, producer, whoever, somebody... Somebody is going to literally get justice for him in the coming year. It's very strange. What he's showing me is paths collide like this. Sometimes you run into somebody random that you don't know knows another person and they start talking. And because they're bragging, they're high, they're talking, they give away information. Somebody can hear when they hear that, they know what they're hearing and they're able to follow it, find it, and kill it. Okay, so follow it, find it, and get rid of it, okay? Bring it out public and end that energy. That's the last thing, that's the last thing. That's the last thing. He's also talking about a train, train trip, trip via train, a train trip. Um, <laughs> That's a tongue twister. A train trip that somebody in his family is taking, like via a train. And I don't mean like downtown LA or New York City train. I mean a train trip, like through the Alps, through through somewhere like this, I'm being shown this train trip um, where you look out the window and there's like magnanimous views and everything. So he's acknowledging that. He's very well aware of what every single person did in his family and very apologetic for not physically being able to do anything for about eight years before, six to eight years before he passed, his body was broken down for a multitude of reasons. I'm wondering if there was something genetic in the lineage of his family because there were gonna be physical issues with him. Uh, he's very funny. He makes things appear and disappear in his kid's house. <laughs> he does that. Talking about a little grandson that I don't feel has been born yet that's going to come through. Uh, grandson, I can see it all. I can see it all and I'm okay. I'm okay. He's okay. The death was horrific. The death was damaging. The death, he acknowledges this, was so um, burdensome on his family. Every single person felt that reverberation like a frequency through them. And he's really sorry for that he was just struggling. It was a big burden for him and he was struggling. Would do it differently now because he can see it, but we can't see it when we're here. Therefore, we don't do differently. So it just, he got caught up in everything. He got caught up. Really good communicator, but an isolator when it comes to himself. So that was part of the problem. He never felt like he should be talking about things. So he pulled himself back and isolated, and that was the problem. I didn't ask for help. So 
that's this is my first video on Jamie Lane. You guys have asked me for so long to do this and I'm so glad that he popped in today. By popped in, I felt his energy. That's what I mean by that. And once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com. 